Hey Nancy Drew fans, we're back for book 50, The Double Jinx Mystery. Once again, we start with Nancy filling in Bess and George about a new mystery. In this case, Mr. Drew has just been hired to unjinx somebody. A man named Oscar Thurston, who owns a small zoo and rare bird aviary outside of River Heights, has recently been targeted by strange happenings and threatening notes with weird symbols on them. His wife is certain they've been jinxed. It turns out that a business called the High Rise Construction Company wants to tear down Thurston Farm to build a giant apartment complex. Mr. Drew asks Nancy to help investigate the strange happenings at the farm and to talk to all the local council members to get them to vote against the development deal. Nancy and Ned share some pretty sweet moments in this book, but again, he still gets a pretty bad deal. All on the same day, he's relegated to help cleaning up after sick birds, he's chloroformed and knocked unconscious, and then he has to take Nancy to the ballet, where she's literally swept off her feet by another guy. While questioning the ballet director after the show, Nancy's invited to give an impromptu performance. As soon as the music started, she found it easy to execute simple movements, then, with increasing confidence, more complicated ones. Some of the professional dancers came on stage and applauded. You are excellent, Boris complimented Nancy. Take my hand. As the tempo of the music increased, the star's performance encouraged Nancy to make more strenuous leaps. Though Nancy could feel a twinge of muscle cramp, she was determined to dance her best. Shortly after that, in a surprisingly manipulative scene, Nancy, Bess, and George take nine grandchildren of one of the local council members to the zoo, show them the giraffes, lions, and bears there, give them cookies and ice cream, and then ask for their help in saving the farm. She began by asking, Would you like to see this place destroyed? No, they all shouted loudly. She told them that the man who called himself Mr. Mervman wanted to do this. How awful, Jamie exclaimed. Nancy said she agreed and was working hard to keep the town council from voting in favor of such a thing. Will you do me a favor, she went on. When they all said yes, she added, tell your Graham and Gramps how much you love this place and you want it to stay. Maybe you could write a letter to the newspaper and all of you could sign it. This mystery also includes some really dangerous scenes. Nancy and Ned are shoved off a cliff that sweeps over a racing river into a dam. They both catch ornithosis, a disease from sick birds, and Nancy is kidnapped by a truly creepy guy. After the first couple of chapters, anyone could guess who the bad guys are in this story, which is probably why the author felt compelled to throw in a side plot that is so random and strange that it should have either been left out entirely or put into its own mystery. And Nancy doesn't get the usual chance to differentiate herself from her friends, who all show her bravery and detective skills. This book is entirely free of making fun of best moments, but there are a couple of meals. My favorite is when Nancy's making dinner at the Thurston's and calls Hannah for advice. Hannah chuckled. You do very well, Nancy, but don't try any fancy dishes on strangers. Nothing with a French name. Just good old American food. After acquainting herself with the contents of the refrigerator, Nancy decided on the menu. It would include split pea soup, broiled lamb chops, mashed potatoes, and cream spinach. Next up, the mystery of the glowing eye. 